Hi, and welcome to Quilt Street. I'm Mary-Kate Carpetris. And I'm Rhonda Lothar. And in this video, we're going to be talking about finally finishing your quilt with binding. But we have a step to do before we can actually get to binding, and that is trimming off the excess batting and backing from around the quilt top. Yes, and the quilt I have, I've brought today, this is an antique top, or excuse me, a vintage top I've had in my collection really for a number of years. And the reason I put off having it quilted, was you can see it has some problem. It's uneven. The points are either right on the edge or they're completely off. Um, this edge is uneven. It's a problematic quilt. So we're gonna make some decisions just to square it up a little bit. Now the quilt you've been making with us, the nine patch quilt, it should be nice and square and you won't have these problems, but we're gonna show you how to trim that up. Yeah, you might have a little unevenness. Right. You know, it might have pulled a little bit here or there, which is completely normal and fine. It most likely won't have the, you know, the large scallops that we're seeing in certain places on this quilt top. But this is, you know, this is the real world of quilting, right? It is. You this know? is life. I mean, Decisions. quilters did not have uh, rotary cutters or right. the rulers we have, so right. they did the best they could. And that's part of the charm of this quilt to me, Absolutely. the fact that it's not perfect. And I'm totally fine with that. But I do want the edges to be straight so that it hangs on a bed correctly. Mm. I do want it straight. Okay. Well, decisions have to be made. They do. All right. So this is not the only way to square up a quilt. This is one way to square up a quilt. You can use, again, this is where these handy dandy 12 and a half inch or maybe the 10 and a half inch size or even as eight or the larger square you have, I find to be the most helpful because it gives me the most information possible about how to get that 90 degree corner. Exactly. And how to get a good start on squaring up the rest of my sides, trimming the rest of my sides. So this is just the way I like. So Rhonda, what do you think? Where are where do you want this place? I think right about here. The um, you can see the point of this star is right on the edge. Mm. We're going to lose that point anyway in the binding. So I'm okay if we trim very close to it. You're going to lose some of the quilting stitches. I'm okay with that. Yeah, because I'm really okay with that. You're going to be stitching over. You're going to be securing those quilting stitches with your binding. Exactly. So it'll be okay. So I'm okay losing this. You know, again, this quilt is very uneven. Um, but that's fine. I'm okay losing this as long as we have a nice square corner. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. You All ready? Right. You ready to cut? Are you ready for it to be cut? I am. I'm ready for my friend to take it over. <laughs> I feel, I, I don't think I've ever cut somebody else's quilt before. This is a new experience. I hope I don't mess <laughs> it up. All right. So I'm glad I have this um, ruler that doesn't slide. <laughs> right. This one really grips <laughs> really the fabric well. Do you try to hold on to any of your backing? A little bit. If I have some left over, sometimes I use it for um, binding in another quilt, perhaps, mm -hmm. or I'll keep the uh, strips. If it's a real skinny strip, I might trim it to two and a half inches and save it for squares or scraps, but I do keep it. I don't okay. discard it. All right. All right. So let's get, I will cut at least this one side. There we go. All right. Now, if I were, um, you know, in a place where I could rotate this and move around the table easily, I would then, without moving the ruler, I would trim this other side as well. Right. And then I would continue a pace with using the 24-inch ruler, and I would try to lay it down and get it as even as possible with that line. And again, decisions might have to be made. I might have to angle it ever so slightly. But before I would get too far, I wouldn't cut all the way to the next corner. Right. I would trim that next corner first, the same way I did this one, so I could see where that 90 degree angle is and try to come find a happy medium. That's a great idea. I like that approach. <laughs> um, this is not the only approach. As we know, there are many ways of trimming a, a quilt top. Um, and But this is sound advice for keeping it square and straight. Really and as like you that. said, you it, this is not going to be a show quilt. No. It doesn't need to be perfectly square, but you do want it to hang nicely on a bed. Exactly. So some accuracy is important to you. Yes. I like that. All right. So we're going to pretend that I went and trimmed it up. Um, and when we come back, we are going to show you how to do the binding. Okay. Now we're ready to make our binding strips. We have cut our strips two and a half inches wide, as they say in the instructions. Now I'm going to take two pieces and I'm going to lay them right sides together, place it right here on the end, 
Now I'm going to draw a, di a diagonal line at 45 degrees. And here's where I use my small square ruler again. Um, as long as your ruler has a 45 degree mark, you're fine. It's right here. This has uh, the number 45. So I know that's my 45 degree angle line. I'm going to line that up along the bottom. Take just a moment to adjust it correctly. There we go. Now I'm going to work from the top left to the lower right. It's very important you sew at this angle and mark it at this angle. So I'm satisfied that my 45 degree line lines up with the bottom of this strip. I'm going to take a water soluble marker or you can use a, a pencil, whatever works for you, and simply draw a diagonal line. This is to guide me in my stitching. Take off my ruler. Now, I don't want this to slip at all. It's important that I keep this together. So I'm going to place a pin or two. Depending on the size of your pins, you might want three. I think I might go with two here. But use as many as you want. Just make sure that's very secure. And now we're ready to sew this together. Okay, I've moved my unit to the sewing machine. And once again, I like to use a leader to get started. Just a little piece of scrap fabric just to get my needle and thread going. And now I'm going to aim this right in the center. I'm going to be sewing straight across this diagonal line that I drew. Oops, I got a little, got a little crease. We'll fix that. Now let's go. And once again, I do not sew over my pins. I'm going to pull them out as I approach them. Pull my pin out. Finish. Cut the thread. All right. Get my little thread snips. Cut off my leader. Now what I'm going to do now is trim off the excess fabric one quarter inch from where my sewn line is. I'm going to take my ruler. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can just be ballpark quarter inch. But I'm going to take my ruler, take my rotary cutter, make that cut, secure it closed again, discard. Okay. Now see when I open it up, it's joined together. I would take this to the machine and press my seam down so it's nice and flat. And I would continue joining all of my binding strips together in this manner. In our instructions, when we say sew together with diagonal seams, this is what we mean. Just keep joining your strips together diagonally with diagonal seams. Once we've done all that, we would take our long strip, our long, long bias binding, not bias binding, our, our long strip of binding, excuse me. We would take it, fold it in half like this, and press it all the way down. So we have a double edge and just press it, press the entire long strip in half like so. We're going to pause for a moment and then we'll show you how to attach the binding to your quilt. So now we are ready to attach the binding strip to the top of the quilt. So what, what um, Rhonda's done is she's taken her pressed binding strip, she's aligned it with the raw edges, aligned with the raw edges, the trimmed edge of the quilt, right? So we don't want to reverse that. We don't want to stitch the fold down. You, that'll come into play later on. Right. She's also pinned it. I think sometimes you don't pin necessarily, but for this stage, especially for if it's your first quilt, you might feel a little bit better if you've pinned it. And also show them what you did where you marked the quarter inch at the end. Yes, yeah, so when we come to the corner, I will, I'll show you why this uh, little mark is important. But one quarter inch from where the edge of this quilt top is, I've made a little mark right here with my water-soluble pen, and that's going to come into play when we turn the corner. Mm -hmm. And also at the beginning, I've left about a 10 to 12 inch tail right here. After we sew the binding all the way around the quilt, we're going to have to join those two ends together, the beginning and the ending. And so this will come into play in just a few minutes. Mm -hmm. But for now, again, just note that the folded part is right here, and the raw edges are all on one side. I'm going to move this to the machine now. And do you still use a walking foot attachment I do. at this point? Because I do use so a walking many layers. foot. Yes. So now we've got five layers going on. So that's a lot of bulk, and your walking foot 
is not only going to help move them through the quilt at an even rate, it's just going to help accommodate that bulk better than a regular walking, uh, regular presser foot might. Absolutely. So I'm going to start, and again, using that one quarter inch seam allowance. And just for security, I'm going to take a little back stitch or two, hit the reverse arrow or however your machine functions. Take a couple little stitches there. Again, I'm going to pull the pins out before I sew over them. And the bulk is off to my left, the bulk of the quilt. Yeah, another, another example of when it's really good to have tabletop space to um, take care of that weight for you because, again, you've only got a quarter inch of this entire quilt underneath the needle. If it falls, it's going to pull and it can cause problems. So Absolutely. have it as supported as you possibly can. Roll it over the shoulder. Wear, start wearing that quilt. And notice too, I, it looks it may look like I'm pushing. My hand is just guiding. The feed dogs move the quilt, so you're not pushing at all. You're just holding things in place. All right, I'm approaching my corner now, my very first corner. And you can probably see, I hope, where I made that one quarter inch mark with the marker right here. So as I approach that corner, I'm going to stop, maybe take a little back stitch, and cut. I totally removed this. I'm going to reposition this so that now I'm going to start down the other side. I'm going to take this edge, fold it up like this so it's at an angle. You can see what I've done here. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to fold it back over itself. Okay? So it's nice and square. I'm going to put a pin in place to make sure everybody stays together. And if I was at home working, I might pin the whole side or I might just try to hold it and as I go. But for today, we're just going to do it just like this. All right, I'm going to start with a leader piece. Here's my leader, just to get my needle going, needle and thread going. Okay, now I'm going to start directly on at the top edge right here. I'm going to sew. Let me raise them. If it's getting caught up, just raise your presser foot a little bit, like I did. Still getting a little caught. All right. There These quarters we go. can be a little they temperamental. Can, they I mean, are a, a little lot finagling. Of there we go. Now we want to go. All right. Once again, I'm going to pull this pin out. And I'm going to keep going. You are off to the races. So I would complete this whole side again. But now let's take, let's cut the thread here and let's see how it did. You can kind of check your corner. Let me trim this leader away. Okay. So I know when I turn the binding over, look at that. That's a beautiful, beautiful corner. It's a beautiful miter. That's exactly yeah. what I want. But that's the technique you will use. Continue sewing binding down the side of your quilt and handle each corner the same way. When we come back, we're going to join the two ends together. Okay, so Rhonda has finished putting the binding strip on all the way around the quilt. She's got this tail end of indeterminate length hanging out here. What she's already done is she's already trimmed her beginning strip by a few inches. As you can see, it leaves about what five inches, four Maybe inches not, yeah. tail, um, and she trimmed that. So now what she's going to do is she's just going to pin that beginning end in place just to keep that where we want it. And we're, go we're going to do kind of an invisible, seamless look. And you're not going to tell where the binding stopped or started. It's right. going to be very seamless. I love this look. Yeah. Okay, so bring, this is the one time that it's okay to give your binding strip a little bit of an extra tug. You want to, you do want to give it a little bit of a stretch and find where it meets up with the cut end of the beginning end, right? Right. So I'm, you want just a little bit taut, not stretching it unreasonably, but just taut, just tight. All right. Okay. So as you can see, I have folded it back where this fold meets my beginning edge. Right there, can you see mm -hmm. that? Okay. Now from here, I'm gonna take my ruler. Because my strips were originally cut two and a half inches wide, I'm gonna measure two and a half inches and make a little mark. One, two, 
Just give that a little mark right here. And right now, I'm going to trim on that mark. There's no turning back now. That's it. We're There's committed. There's no turning back now. <laughs> okay. Now, the next trick is going to be joining these two ends together. And so you have to do a little bit of wrestling with your quilt right yeah. here. So to make that easier, we're going to make a little fold here so it's not quite so bulky to deal with. I'm just going to take a little tuck right here and pin it just to kind of give myself some room to work. Yeah, because right at this point, the quilt is is so put together that it really does have a mind of its own. It's going to keep wanting to relax on you yes. and you want to have some, um, some, some room to play here. All right, so you remember back when we were first making binding, we had our strip like this, correct? A horizontal strip. And then we joined a strip next to it. So instead of in a separate strip right here, we're joining this little piece. So it gets a little unwieldy, just a little bit. It takes me a minute of wrestling, believe me. I'm going to take this. Yeah. Thank you. This level of finagling is completely <laughs> normal. Completely normal. All right, so you can see how I have this pretty much perpendicular like I had it when we were first making quilt binding, when we were first joining those strips together. I'm going to take my ruler. Oh, this yeah. is tricky. It is. Do you want to turn it so that it's... Yeah, that might help. Thank you. Yeah. Good to have a friend to help you along. I'm going to take a pin here. That might help me just a little bit, I think. I do this at home, too. I feel like I'm constantly wrestling right now. So it helps me to have a little pin. All right, that's going to help me, I believe. Okay. Let's kind of get this out of the way a little bit. Okay, there we go. That's what I want. So I'm going to take my ruler. Where's my 45 degree line? At the bottom. I'm just going to draw a diagonal line. That's all I need is a diagonal line. And you want to make sure that the points are on the outside. So you're drawing a top left to bottom right. Yeah. Just like we did when we were joining binding strips. Okay. Got our little line drawn. Now let's go to the machine. Mm -hmm. This is where the magic happens. Again, kind of wrestle a little bit, get the quilt over here. All right, I'm going to use a leader. I like to use a leader so that my thread doesn't get tangled up. All right. Again, kind of wrestle with it. And I'm going to sew from corner to corner on my drawn line. Raise my foot up a little bit. There we go, there we go. Pull my pin. And you might find it more helpful to use three pins. That's an excellent idea. All right. Very good. All right, I'm going to take my scissors. Let me snip this little leader off. I'm going to trim the excess fabrics. Pardon me. I'm going to trim this excess fabric uh, about a quarter inch from my stitching line. All right, I'm going to unpin this bulk that I had. Take that pin out. Look at this. It is just beautiful. And the reason that we tugged that tail end a little bit is that it helps, um, it just helps it relax right into place where it needs to be. Right, so. it eases that fullness just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I kind of finger press it. I have a little bit of fullness here. I probably should have pulled a little bit tighter, but um, this is all ready to go. So as you can see, it joins beginning to end seamlessly. And so now you just need to finish the seam. That's it. I'll just stitch right here and finish the seam. And our very last step is to hand sew the binding to the back. Okay. The binding is completely attached by machine, and now we're going to flip it around to the back, and we're going to show you how to attach the binding on the back by hand. Yes, and I like to use two things. I like to put a thimble on my middle finger, and it helps me to get a better grip if I just use a little piece. You can get an office supply store. I just slip that over my thumb. This one's been much used. Um, that just helps me grip the needle. 
All right, I'm going to start near the corner so you can see how to handle that. I dropped my needle. All right, and in this example, again, I'm using this eggplant thread so you can see what I'm doing, but ideally you would want to match uh, your thread to the color of your binding. And these are nifty little clips that uh, recently was introduced to. I love these because they take pressure off my thumb from holding this in place so tightly. And it also kind of, quote, finger presses this in place. It makes that edge nice and even for me. So I really love using these little binder clips. All right, so kind of like Mary Kate showed you in hand stitching, I'm just gonna take a little stitch so you're coming up through the backing. Yes. And kind of at a, at a slant. Yes. Into and I the, pulled the my edge knot. of the fold of the binding. Yes. And I do not want to go all the way through to the front, okay? I want my stitches to be as invisible as possible. So I'm taking care just to slip through the binding and just this little piece. I want to just barely catch the backing and just keep sewing. And you've pulled the, the fold of the binding around to the back so that it covers the line of stitching that was used to attach Correct. the binding to the front. Thank you for mentioning that. Here's where we, uh, where we machine stitch the binding. You can see the stitch line here on the back. What we're doing is we're covering that raw edge and covering that line of stitching. That's what you're trying to do. And so we're just going to keep stitching. And again, my stitches are showing because I'm using contrasting thread. Ideally, you'd be using matching thread. So I'm just going to take, this is a great to me. I'll actually, I love attaching the binding. <laughs> this is where, it, can be, it can be time consuming, but I do as well. It's very meditative. I mean, I can, this is, this is one part of quilting I can do while I'm watching TV even, because it doesn't take, it's just very easy just to slip stitch this. It's a very low stress way to finish your quilt. I do want to say one thing. If you're making this as a toddler quilt or a baby quilt, um, I would make small stitches. Ask me True. how I know, um, because little fingers have a way of little. fitting in between those stitches and ripping them out. I've had to re replace, oh dear. not replace a binding, but repair a binding um, That's for a great my point. daughter's toddler quilt. Um, so if it's, if it's gonna be subjected to Tiny fingers take tiny stitches here. That's a great point. I'm kind of making stitches a little bit larger than I would to, to get us to the corner. Mm. So, yeah, normally I would have this much closer to my face. Me too. <laughs> and uh, right under my eyes. Okay, so you can see I'm, I'm approaching this corner. I'm gonna show you how to, how to turn this corner. I shifted my clip so it's attached right here to hold it in place for me. I'm gonna come up right inside that point, yeah. right here. I've come up, again, you can see my stitches here. I'm gonna come under and just take one little stitch, maybe one or two stitches to hold it in place, okay? Then I'm gonna continue moving down this side of the quilt and just keep going until I've completed my binding. And then you are done. You are done. <laughs> you have made your first quilt. It's amazing. Now. There is an issue of labeling your quilt. We're not going to go into detail about this now, um, but labeling your quilt is something that's so important, especially if you're giving it as a gift. Um, it should include your name, your city, the year you completed it, maybe the year you started it. If there are different years, if you want to put that time. If it's for a special occasion, if you said, I made this quilt um, for Jane for her 25th anniversary, you know, right. it's nice to commemorate that. I mean, that way, years from now, you know, whenever I get an antique quilt top, I really want to know the story of it. Right. And it, I think it's great as quilters to include that as part of your, as part of the quilt label. And that way future generations will know what went into that quilt and who it was for. Absolutely. They will love it. They will. Well, you did it. You finished your first quilt and we cannot wait to see what you've made. Thank you for joining us and take care.